<laughs> Welcome back to Run It Back with Max and RJ. We do not have that much time, so we are just gonna, no. We're gonna we're run getting through right it. into it. We're getting right into it. It's right. like an emergency pod. Emergency pod. Yes, we I are like coming it. off the lottery, but before mm -hmm. we get there, mm -hmm. wow, already a quick pivot. Ah, a quick pivot. Okay, quick pivot. you're already moving. Quick pivot. We're Kawhi <laughs> okay. Leonard here. So I want to start off with Kawhi. Sheesh. The final yeah. shot. Yeah, man. Because the last time we talked, it mm -hmm. was before Game Seven. Also, your five breakfast tacos in the hole. What? Yeah, I, that was it. I thought Dom said I had one no, uh, bet no, 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 back. Because no, no, no. I didn't. I picked you Toronto. Did one. No, you picked in Game Six. You oh, had Toronto my minus God. two. <laughs> All Sorry. right. Okay. Okay. Also, sure. if you are listening, if you're watching, thank you so much. You've already made it about two minutes into the <laughs> yeah. pod, about a minute fifteen mm -hmm. into the pod. Make mm -hmm. sure to subscribe, like us, all the Instagram stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Now we're going to keep Appreciate talking. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my take on Kawhi. As I don't, I don't like to admit biases. Mm -hmm. As a Sixers fan, mm -hmm. I'll admit it. Sixers fan loves it. Sixers won Spurs two. Right. Um, so as a Sixers fan, my biggest qualm with, with Kawhi <laughs> yeah. is the qualm. fact Kawhi qualm. that so when you look at history, you look at the iconic shots, you yeah. look at the Tim Duncan shots, you look at the Manu shots, right? Right. Uh, you look at the MJ shot. Uh, yeah. Over Mark Elo in the, against yeah. the Cavs to get mm -hmm. to the finals. When we look back at this shot, as a Sixers fan, this is going to hurt, but the part that hurts even more to me, and this was in the moment I was thinking mm -hmm. about this, mm -hmm. it's not going to be against an iconic player. And then I thought, I was like, okay, what if this is just the start of his career? Because Which is up until what I believe point, the case is, yeah. Right, yeah. up until this point, like, yes, everyone, if you know basketball, you know Kawhi Leonard. If right. you know the Spurs, you know Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. You know he's very talented on both ends of the floor. But also, no, they pretty much took a year off. Yeah. He didn't start as a superstar. He yeah. gradually raised to that, and he was there until he fell off. Right, right. He's back now. So I pose the question, is he a Hall of Famer? Right now, he, yes, he's absolutely a Hall of Famer wow. right now. I mean, think about but it. I think that's a little spurt. Um, no, no, I, I think the numbers will just back that up. I mean, multiple All-Star Game appearances was defensive player, back-to-back -back years, defensive player of the year. Probably could have won it a third year when Draymond Green got it, but, you know, I guess they figured it was time for Draymond to get that one. Um, finished top three MVP voting the last two seasons that he was with San Antonio, the last two full seasons. And the crazy part about that is that he's like 27 years yeah. old. That's the part that I, I think is kind of like mind boggling because you're right. We've known Kawhi from when he came out of San Diego State. I think he was like 19, 20 years old, grew up here, really was not the main focus of the offense, didn't have to be, but now has blossomed into really this, I mean, just a force, as we said before, on both ends of the court. And in that Toronto game, I think the the biggest indication of Kawhi's superstar status is that the Raptors basically just told him, here's the ball, Go. you do this. Take as many shots as you want. Did he take 39 want. in the last game? He took 39, 16 of 39, scored 41 points. But, I mean, you could see that Siakam, Lowry, uh, Mark Gasol was shooting, but none of those guys really wanted much to do with that game seven. And they basically just gave it to Kawhi and mm -hmm. got out of his way. And that is the part that I think is kind of – is shocking about this is that he's still sort of ascending into this type of player that he's going to be for the next at least five, six years. So Think about it. He doesn't, he takes care of himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do anything off the court that's going to really impede any sort Unless of physical have drama progress. with organizations. Sure. It's, it, right. Unless that. Um, <laughs> but think about it. I mean, 27, 28 years old, and I mean, he's in his prime right mm -hmm. now. He is absolutely in line to be a Hall of Fame. I mean, he's the NBA Finals MVP, already won a championship. I mean, I think that right there, the criteria is already leaning towards that Hall of Fame. Status. He's the best player on a playoff team. Yeah, that absolutely. could go. Right. You know what? Let's right. take this. We're going to take this right into the Eastern <laughs> Finals prediction. What okay. do you think happens with this? Bucks Raptors. Well, look, I've been picking the Raptors since uh, you know middle of the season, I, and I think because the the Raptors can kind of throw a lot of things besides Kawhi at Giannis, so I feel like they're if Nick Nurse mixes up the defenses a little bit, kind of throws. Giannis, Giannis for a loop a little bit, then I think it's going to be imperative for the other guys. And I just think Toronto from top to bottom is just a better overall roster. So I'm going to go with the Raptors. Again, I've been kind of picking the Raptors for some time now. So I Is Giannis overrated or Kawhi underrated? Giannis overrated or Kawhi underrated? I, st I still think Kawhi is underrated in a sense. I, I mean, because again, we saw that shot on Sunday night and 
it was like this big kawaii sort of coming out party. But I think people no, here, like people here in San Antonio knew knew what kawaii and was. And everyone and who watched the regular out. season and everyone who watched the Raptors in the regular season, the guy averaged twenty seven. Yes, mm-hmm. he only played like sixty games. Sixty but games. But that's because yeah. listen, that's the NBA we play in. Load management. Why man. would you? The, want the Raptors babied him, but it's worked it's to, for him to carry things. this load. And yeah. this was my rant. I'm not sure if I did this on the pod, but I'm about to. <laughs> My problem yeah. with the Sixers, and for a lot of these organizations, mm-hmm. look at the Thunder, for instance. Yeah, You work so hard in that 82-game stretch. It is a marathon. <laughs> it is such it's a grueling. trudge. Yeah. It really yeah. is. And you you show off. You show up. You put up the stats. Mm-hmm. You do what you can do. Yeah. But the whole point of the season is yeah. to get to this point. Right. And when you can do that in the season, yeah, that's great. But when you get here, this is when you're supposed to turn it on. It's not supposed to be the other, other way around. You're not supposed to be aggressive in the regular season and come back here yeah, and be like, oh, I'm just going to yeah, pass it off. Kind of Looking at you, Ben yeah. Simmons. So when we get <laughs> wow, here okay. and you see players, you know, want to pass it off. When you see Kawhi, not, when you see Kyle Lowry, yeah. when you see him not do anything. Yeah. But then on the other hand, mm-hmm. when you see Kawhi Leonard and you see him go off, and I hate it so much because I want to hate him. <laughs> I really don't want to like him. But uh, is he everything yeah. that... You know, sports pundits and everything that real basketball fans love. He doesn't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. He doesn't talk trash. Right. He yeah. doesn't give outlandish statements. Nope. Never all does he that. does. Rarely talks. <laughs> all he does yeah. is work on his game, mm-hmm. plays tough defense, yeah. scores efficiently, and is clutch. Yeah. Which is why I think it is so uh, so crazy that you know he was sort of like the perfect spur mm-hmm. in a sense. Now I will uh, I'll kind of deflect a little bit because when we talk about perfect spur, we think of Tim Duncan kind of in that same mold, quiet kind of a leadership. Kawhi was was different from Tim before you know that whole argument gets bundled. You know Kawhi was perfect. Kawhi was different. His family was his family. Tim's family was the Spurs family. So that's really kind of where they there was a huge separation. But yes, I mean it, if if I was not looking at this from the Spurs lens right. or from a Spurs fandom point of view then yeah, you absolutely have to appreciate what Kawhi Leonard has been able to do and the way he goes about his business. Like you said, doesn't trash talk, doesn't you know get in anyone's face, doesn't you know chest pump or do anything like that. I mean, the dude just goes out there and balls and it's insane how he just is, I mean, he's is machine-like mm-hmm. in his methods and his, in his tactics. And I, you know, again, I, I can appreciate him as the player that he's become, but again, it does, it does sting. It absolutely Look, stings. It should. Being here and covering the Spurs yeah. while all of this nonsense happened <laughs> made me detest him as a person. And then watching yes. him single-handedly yeah. dismantle my, the franchise I grew up yeah. rooting for and grew up watching made me hate him so much. But at the same time, any player or any sports fan around the mm-hmm. league watching, yeah. watching him at all, has to look at that and be like, he is the most versatile player other right. than Giannis, except for he's more efficient. Yeah. He can score from any point and he can defend any position. Yes. And that that shot, not only was he coming off screen by our best defender in Ben Simmons, and statistically the best defender, not just yeah. when you look at it. Yeah. Statistically, that was the most effective defender. Mm-hmm. Coming off that, then going one-on-one against Joel Embiid, 7-2, hand yeah. in his face, and I zoomed in on the final shot. <laughs> literally. Why would you do that to yourself? This, because I'd like to torture myself. So at that yeah. point, there was yeah. literally this much space. You could, There's no way he could see it. Yeah. He was just throwing up a prayer. Yeah. Four bounces in. 18 and feet in the air, too. I think they did, like, a whole sports analytics thing. It yeah. is absolutely crazy. So you brought up a good point, though, and, and you mentioned last season, and it was funny because I tweeted out that during the post game, I think you maybe saw him get as emotional as what he'll ever probably get. Uh, he mentioned that that's the most emotion he showed since he won the, the 2014 finals here in San Antonio. But he also mentioned something interesting, and it, it felt like he was – I didn't think he was going to kind of break down, but – when he was talking to uh, who's the TNT sideline reporter, Roz Roz Godum, oh yeah, 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 he he mentioned something to the effect of, "I went through a lot last year. You know, I I really went through a lot last year, and this means a lot to me right now, this moment. And I think there's two ways to look at it. Yes, Kawhi probably did go through a lot because the Spurs is such a foundation that really anyone's going to take the Spurs side of things. Mm-hmm. I f- I do feel like Kawhi kind of got jobbed a little bit in the sense that no one really took. His Ooh. side of things, but at the same time, I do think that Kawhi went about it all the wrong ways. Terribly. I've said this before, went about it all the wrong ways. He basically sabotaged the season, mm-hmm. took their money, didn't show up for games. 
he was not good in that in that moment for the team and it really led to a fraction of that team it was also manu's last year tony's last year and really just kind of derailed the Danny's entire season year. yeah well green yeah of course <laughs> green had to go so so there's two ways to look at it i do think the spurs do share some blame in what happened and hearing Kawhi say that lets me know that Kawhi did kind of go through some stuff because he was doubted. Obviously, you know, there's right. a lot of people that said that he could have played, that he should have played. But at the same time, he did sabotage their season. I mean, he really did. So there, there's blame on both sides. So it, it's it's a hard thing to look at, but you're right. It, looking at the entire picture, I mean, he's just gone about it all the right ways and done things the right way. That shot was incredible, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. No, that hurts, it really man. was. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. What if Kawhi wins finals? I know. Did you see the Jets thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Breaking news like, on the okay. pod. <laughs> Quick football aside, Jets just fired their general yeah. manager. So if you're yeah. a Jets fan out there, congratulations. The chaos continues. You're basically the Lakers of football right now. Okay, yeah. So we're going to get to the Lakers <laughs> in a second. Yeah. What if Kawhi wins finals MVP? If he wins finals, that MVP, assumes that they beat the Warriors. Right. Yeah, they beat the Bucks. Yeah. They There's go all the really way. There's no one in line who I think would win it in Toronto besides him. So, right. I mean, if he wins finals MVP again, it just cements him as what we were talking about earlier. As a no, no, no but not even that. Not even the Hall of Fame status. I'm talking about what happens then, next for him. Uh, then I mean, he can obviously do whatever he wants. I I still don't think that. You don't think th- he stays in Toronto? I don't think he stays. And I mean, I still think that if they win the finals and he's MVP. I think there's a chance. Obviously, there's always been. You think a he already has his state. mind made up? I think he has his mind made up. You think he's going to the Clippers? I think he wants to move back home. I think he's always wanted to move back home, and the way he went about it with the Spurs was completely wrong. But I mean, I can't blame the guy for wanting to do what he wants to do with his life. I mean, yeah. that's what he wants to do. Wants to go back home. I will be shocked if Toronto manages to keep him, but they would be able to offer him more money. So he that, goes that to the Clippers. KD leaves the Warriors. Are the yeah. Clippers a favorite? Ooh, uh, I, I think uh, the Clippers would probably be in the top. I mean, three, yeah, top, top two, three teams in the West. All right, how much yeah. time are we looking at? Yeah. All right, we got twelve thirty. All right, yes. so we'll knock All this right. out in nine more minutes. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're gonna stay with some fun drama. I already said Lakers of football in regards okay. to the Jets. Yeah. Also, good for you, Adam Gase. You are now <laughs> the head coach. Like the, the, this guy has been everywhere. How? Also, I don't know. That's one of those. He hasn't proven he's like the Cliff anything. Kingsbury, like losing records, and then he just yeah. But Cliff has Kingsbury, kind of moved I can up. I can make the argument for Cliff Kingsbury. Like a lot of NFL ideas <laughs> yeah. come from college. So That's if you true. can bring a revolutionary offense, yeah. you get your guy in Kyler Murray. Yeah. It's a fresh slate. So with you're the Cardinals, like why not take a chance? Sure. But with the hey, Jets, Cliff is a New Braunfels guy. So, <laughs> but with the Love Jets, you, it's like yeah. yeah. If you're listening, feel free to yeah. join us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Also, shout out Tom Brady. He did the hashtag oh, yeah. Run It Back. Nice. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, we all need Celsius before here. Um, so Lakers, mm-hmm. they settled with Frank Vogel after yeah. they got rejected by Monty Williams yeah. and Ty Red Lou. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. They got Vogel, yeah. which, like, that, I really liked him on the Pacers, didn't like him in Orlando, mm-hmm. and it seems like wherever he leaves, the team does better after him. Yeah, uh, again, Frank Vogel, kind of your run-of-the-mill head coach. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, like, the problem with him was his offenses were scoring, like, 80 points a game. Yeah, and I, I think that's why he was kind of more of a defensive-minded mm-hmm. head coach, right? So, so I, they brought in Jason Kidd. So they brought in Jason Kidd. I mean, ultimately, I think all roads lead to Jason Kidd and LeBron being here's, basically like co coaches Here's the of thing, team. and I heard yeah. a great take. They didn't want to make Jason Kidd the head coach because mm-hmm. of his drama, because he had he pled guilty to domestic abuse. Right. Okay. Yeah. And they yeah, didn't want to have that as the face yeah, of the yeah, franchise, kinda, which right, I understand. Right. That's, yeah. a, that's yeah. a bad PR move. Right. Right. Um, but. I also had a uh, got a great other take. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if I made this up or I saw it somewhere. I could see me making this up because I've been advocating it for a while. Okay. <laughs> How many bad and failed head coaches do we need to go through before Becky Hammond gets a chance in the league? Oh man, that's a great. Has she question. not proven that she's? That's a great capable? question. I I mean yes. She's I, played I think Becky. Yeah, yeah. She so. has coached and won a summer league, mm-hmm. and she's been under Pop's tutelage for five years now. Yeah. Uh, for at least uh, three or four, I okay. want to say. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so what what has to happen for her to finally get a chance? Someone just has to be and daring if enough to take that opportunity with her. Given yeah. I don't, I didn't want her to go to the Knicks because I think that's a joke of a franchise. Right. I yeah. I don't know if I want her to go to the Lakers, but I think that there is some semblance of stability with LeBron there. Right. Yeah. The only problem is 
you're going to have these idiots who don't know what they're talking about who are going to say, oh, classic Lakers, like making another mistake with a head coach, just yeah. taking the flat. No, I think that she, she epitomizes stability, and right. I think she deserves to go to a franchise yeah. with a head coach not getting fired in a terrible situation, but someone retiring. I just would have liked to even see her get an interview. Well, that and you know what? Last year she did interview for the Bucks job, mm -hmm. so she has at least kind of gone through a little bit of that, uh, the interview process, so to say. So, um, I look. I think Becky is ready. I think I see the way she interacts with the players. I think uh, you know she works well with the players. She kind of relates to them. But you're right. The situation is a big thing with her because I mean, when you're kind of breaking that that ceiling that she would mold. I mean you're breaking pretty much decades on decades mm -hmm. of linear NBA coaches being all History. just men um, then I you got to be in a, a in a decent situation mm -hmm. so you're right I I think about what is the situation you know I mean if New Orleans if that was open a small market team, a team yeah. that, that can deal Anthony Davis and maybe sure. get back like a Tatum or someone maybe, like that. You know what? I, Zion. We're gonna get to the we're gonna get to the lottery in a second. Stop jumping yeah. ahead. Okay, I'm just saying yeah. it would be <laughs> too I think it's a team that's yeah. sort of out of the public mm -hmm. eye. Not saying Becky can't handle that situation, but I think it has to be a good situation for her to kind of take that jump. And I do worry about what's gonna happen with her and the other Spurs assistant coaches because Pop said he's gonna be here three more years. Yeah. I don't think Idoka's wants to stick around for another three years under him. I don't know. I, I, honestly, I, mean, I don't know that. the Spurs assistants, they get coaching jobs. Yeah, and I don't know if Becky is like, well, you know, I was kind of waiting this job yeah. out, and now maybe I need to start looking at some other things. I, but, I, but I'm glad that Becky's not doing the college route. I don't think she needs to prove herself no. in college. She has already she's she's interviewed for those jobs, and but yeah, she's putting the work. I see the way she interacts with the players. I think she'd be great. We're going to do an entire yeah. podcast this summer. I'm Becky. Devoted to, no, seriously. <laughs> We're going to go yeah. team by team yeah. and break down which team has yeah. the most stability mm -hmm. and we're not necessarily going to say it would be a perfect fit for Becky, yeah. but we're going to say the most stable places, most stable teams to coach that you would want right now. Yeah, I If mean, the coach got the, fired or retired right, for right. some yeah. weird situation. A, a young team where she's able to kind of, you know, put get her imprint what already. What about the Hawks? Yeah, the Hawks. I mean, why not? Yeah, Trey Young. Picks. Who's? But they just hired. Uh, they yeah, had yeah, Pierce yeah. last year. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, a, we're a just young saying coach. Yeah, we're yeah, just, we're saying just throwing out. Yeah, but all right. You're right. So you already kind of alluded to it in the lottery last night. Draft Damn. lottery. I'm going to start off hot. I'm starting off with a hot take. We still got about five <laughs> more minutes. Uh, hot take. Hot okay. take city. Yeah. I am not a sports conspiracist. I won't ever say mm -hmm. there was dirty dealings done, which, like, if there ever were, we would never really know. Yeah. So, I had a lot of people last night. Also, breaking news if you didn't Tim watch Tim Donahue. It. Tim Donahue. Yeah, that's yeah, fair. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, breaking news if you didn't watch the lottery last night. Uh, the Pelicans have the yeah. number one pick. Man. Yeah. So, here's the thing. I had a lot of people tweet out, this is how you know the NBA is not rigged. Because if it were rigged, they would give the Knicks the number one pick. Of course. That's what everyone thought they were going to get. That's, yeah. a dumb, that's a dumb idea. Uh -huh. Because yeah. one, if the NBA were rigging it, why would you do it to the way that everyone would think it? Why not know that KD is already going to go there? Why not know that they are going to get at least one franchise player? Mm -hmm. Whether it's Ke I'd say mm -hmm. their, their floor is Kemba yeah. and their ceiling is KD and another superstar. Yeah. So you know that you're going to be fine mm -hmm. this offseason. Yeah. Not to mention, Madison Square Garden never has a problem selling out. No, they're, they're, and they're like the most, val the most valuable yeah. NBA team. And what was last yeah. time they made the playoffs? I exactly. Carmelo's one year. Right. Like Carmelo had so a good here's year. the yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Why not give it to the team that has, is struggling, has the lowest attendance rate, the smallest media market, and the lowest amount of reporters there? Why not throw them the number one pick, mm -hmm. who is a flash in the pan, yeah. who is one of the most iconic images in all of college basketball, let alone basketball. You have pundits out right. there who are saying, also, I said pundits like 30 times last podcast. <laughs> uh, so that was one. Should do um, like a pundit tracker, right. <laughs> a little count Just or one, something too. Yeah. Uh, you had pundits out there who said if Zion entered the league today, he would already be a top 50 player. Yeah, yeah. Why not throw him on a team that you know a once in a generation player like Anthony Davis is leaving? Mm -hmm. So why not throw him on there just to watch? Because he will put people in the seats. He's a must cover for any sports reporter, heck, even of any reporter. And then here's my take: if you're the Knicks, you have the third pick. Why not? Trade, bundle that with Kevin Knox, who you drafted last year, mm -hmm. maybe a future pick, move down and throw that at them for Anthony Davis because he's leaving after a year. Yeah. And yeah. that way you have Zion, 
you have um, the number three pick. Yeah. Uh, you have whatever else they're throwing in the trade. And in the meantime, you have Drew Holiday. So all that being said, uh -oh. I hate it. I you hate, hate it. it. I hate that New Orleans got it. Why? I would have rather had. You're saving the franchise, I would have rather had though. the Knicks. Why? Why do you want to save that franchise? I don't want to. I'm saying in theory. That franchise should be in Seattle. That, I actually that just had this argument. I had this argument. Miss Il, if you're listening, yeah. thank you so much no, for listening. No, no, no. I mean, why? They've had no. Anthony Davis for mm -hmm. the past six years. They, I think it was 2012 or whatever yeah, when AD was the number one pick. What have they that done with that? They they have terrible attendance. Yeah. The city does not care. The city Are you cares talking about trash on the Smoothie King Stadium? <laughs> How <laughs> I'm dare you? Trash on the Pelicans. <laughs> um, yeah, they've had AD there, like a, an all NBA player for the past six years. Mm -hmm. Haven't done anything with him. Uh, he wants to get out of town. I don't blame him. It's a not good run franchise. There, it's an NFL city. Mm -hmm. It's a city that belongs to LSU football. Also, uh, the Sugar Bowl. They. That, it's just a terrible situation. So you're saying situation. get rid of basketball there in its I, entirety. That franchise should not be there. I'm okay. sorry. I just do not like the fact that they got the number one pick. I want to argue I with you. I hated it. I, I hated it. I can argue with you, but I literally just made all of these points to Miss I.L. <laughs> but that's, and I'm not saying that they should have done it, but I'm yeah. saying if I were an NBA conspiracist, which I'm not, that would be an easy way to save right. the franchise from them selling it. And the I point, completely I mean, agree. But the point that you're saying about the whole Knicks thing, I do believe that the Knicks kind of already knew that they were going to get KD. Yeah. So I don't think they're that that terribly hurt about it. Because also, KD, does he want to go to a place where Zion's going to be there? Look, he's been he's doing this for share. 10 years. Why would he want to start over with Zion? Exactly. So I can see that. He would want to trade that KD away anyway. I KD not really wanting to be in that situation. I think they would want to trade for AD. If they had the number one pick, yeah. they'd want to trade yeah. for AD anyway. Why, don't, why not trade, like you said, the third pick? Get Just give New Orleans the one and three. RJ Barrett, Zion Williamson, and, they're in New Orleans. And you give him Kevin Knox from last year, yeah, who was a top I, five. Sure, I would do it. I mean, but... Again, I, I hate it. Yeah. I hate the fact that New Orleans got the got the. Pick, I would man. love a Seattle Plus, team Plus, the fact is now the Spurs are going to have to play this guy four times yeah. a year, and Memphis got the number two pick. But here's They're going to the play John Morant four times a year. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as a Sixers fan, they stay out of the East. <laughs> yeah, but, that's true. <laughs> no, and here's the thing. You can put Zion. I have a real hot take. I'm not sure how spicy we can get on this pod. <laughs> Do we know Zion's going to translate? Do we know he's really good? We don't know any of these guys. Jamarcus Russell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consensus number one no, pick. No, we don't know any of the, what any of these guys are going to do. And look, do. I've yeah. listened to Zion. I've watched his yeah. highlights since high school. And yeah. they were great highlights, yeah. but the competitors in high school weren't top tier. Right, right. In college, most of his shots, putbacks. Yeah. Great Dunks, in transition. Yeah. He is so much more of an athlete than everyone else. But yeah. And, like, and I get it, but he's also six six and a half. Yeah, yeah. He's shorter than R.J. Barrett. Yeah. What position is he going to play? I mean, a small forward power. I think he is basically the next version of, like, a Charles Barkley. And I agree with that. You know what I mean? That's kind of his mold, kind of his fit. But, again, I, you know, think about it. He's 18, 17, yeah. 18 years old, so he will grow into an well, NBA. How much is he more going to grow? I, you, who knows? I mean, but I, I assume that he's going to get leaner once he gets in an NBA program, NBA trainers. You know, health. If he's dedicated enough to being that type of person, I think he can get there. So, okay. but again, we don't know. This, we is, don't know. A, this is a day for yeah. another pod. Yeah. We're going to yeah. have this one. We're going to have the Becky Hammond one. It. So, God, I would have rather him gone to New York. I just. So, yeah. here's the thing, though. Last point, and then we got to do <laughs> yeah. a quick breakfast bet. And okay. we got to go. Oh, my God. Um, I know. We're, we're running through. We're at 24 minutes, and I got to okay. go do the noon. Yeah. Also, please watch KSAT News. Hey, by the way, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Happy appreciate birthday, it. Max Massey. Okay. Um, it's my birthday. <laughs> um, this is what I want to do on yeah. my birthday. Um, mm -hmm. So, what was I going to say? Oh, right. Um, Zion, you made me lose my train of thought with the birthday thing. I was like, I honestly, like, I get a little uncomfortable when people say happy you birthday. I, because, like, I'm, I'm like, thank you. I don't to... like being like the okay. whatever. Uh, where are we? Okay, Warriors Blazers. Warriors Blazers. All right, Steph, breakfast Steph. bet. Okay, yeah. Um, I had another Zion point. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm sure he's going to be good. I'm sure he's yeah. going to be an all-star. The dunks alone yeah. will get him an all-star. Yeah. But I don't know if he's going to be a transcendent player. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think he's going to be the next AD. Right. Anyway, uh, so tonight. Um, okay. Yeah. Quick Portland Golden State. Uh, Adrian Garcia has no idea what he's talking about when he yeah. said Steph's worse than Dame. It's unbelievable. Steph took over, yeah. and I think that this is kind of the – um, us against the world mentality, where it's like, hey, did you guys forget that we were 73 win team without yeah. KD? Yeah. Um, and I think that they can still, I, I think they could sweep without KD coming oh, back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, we saw last night that the Warriors really have to have an off game in order for Portland to maybe win one or two games. Mm -hmm. I do give Portland uh, a win. It, 
Yeah, I it used to be called the Rose right. Garden. I don't know. It's called the Moda Center now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll give Portland a win at home just because of their home crowd so and five, the energy. One? Or five, five. One? Yeah, so five. Okay. I, I mean, to me, the, the Western Conference Finals already happened. That was Houston Golden State. Milwaukee's yeah. a six and a half point favorite. Mm, interesting. Who are you taking? This I, is a breakfast bet. I'm Birthday gonna, breakfast bet. So I'm going to, as much as I think Toronto's going to win this series, I think Milwaukee will win game one. So you're taking Milwaukee minus six and a half? Oh, my God. Minus <laughs> six and a half? <laughs> slide. Uh, sure, man. All I right, guess. deal. That's this is for line. six breakfast tacos. Oh my God. Hey, but I brought donuts this morning. I didn't want donuts. I wanted <laughs> breakfast tacos. Uh, all right, anything you want to plug before we got to go? Uh, yeah. Um, ask, uh, Twitter, at case at RJ. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, of course, Instagram as well. Running back on Instagram. Thank you very much. Everyone for following, I uh, want to let you know, we're going to talk to uh, Caden Stearns today. Caden, of course, is a, he's a steel grad. He's a freshman mm-hmm. All-American, so I'm going to go talk to him today and probably post something online. He's doing some cool stuff with the community. They love him at Steel. He's a great kid and a, just a, a great player, obviously. All so, right. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, if you've made it all the way through, you're 26 and 27 mm-hmm. seconds in. Thank you so much. Remember, listen, subscribe, rate us, all the Instagram. If you give us a shout-out, we will mention you on the pod. Thank you so much.